depending on how they rank you, uh, very often it's how often you uh, purchase uh, either prescription or non-prescription allergy medicines and, and uh, how many trips to the doctor for allergies, that kind of thing. And that's, that's why we keep coming out number one. You know, the pollution levels, does that have a lot to do with being in the valley and things just kind of settle in a little bit? That, and, uh, you know, we use a lot of coal-fired steam plants and, uh, uh, you know, for, you know, we've got I-40 and 75 coming together. We have uh, the most visited uh, national park in the country and, and just uh, all that brings uh, a lot of pollution, unfortunately. But yes, we, that's hard to measure, Jim, but, uh, you know, in other parts of the country and the world, if, if you don't have big mountains to, to uh, block the, the pollution from kind of floating through, uh, then uh, uh, you're not going to have as much uh, pollution there. Okay, one of the things I talked about leading into the break is about reducing allergens in our inside the home. Yes. First off, what are our biggest culprits inside the home? What? Well, the indoor allergens are going to be your dust mites, your pet danders, and the uh, mold is a very common problem in this area, and that's that's very difficult to take uh, to remove outside of, you know in your home, especially if you're allergic to it, because you're going to be reacting to small amounts of it. Uh, you also have the dreaded cockroach. When you tell people they're allergic to cockroach, the Hmm. The mothers are horrified that you think they have cockroaches in their house. In reality, it's just a um, just the skeletons, the droppings, the cockroaches. So you can, uh, you know, a good exterminator. After a few years, you'll you'll have a few cockroaches dead around your periphery of your house, and you're going to get a uh, you're going to get some cockroach dander or cockroach uh, antigen in your house. Now, inside the home, I guess the two things I think about: one is the carpet. Hmm. You know, if you have a lot of carpet. Right. Um, how, how should we, you know, I've heard different things on how we should clean our carpets. I've heard you should just steam clean, I've, or, or that you should steam clean. I've heard others say you shouldn't steam clean because of the water. Right. What, what is the best way to keep your carpet clean and free from allergens? Uh, well, that's, uh, that's the most difficult because you're going to get uh, uh, dust mites, molds, and animal danders into the carpet and into the backing of the carpet and even sealed in with the with the liner of the carpet, the, the pad in the carpet uh, is a great reservoir for allergens. Uh, but as far as cleaning goes, definitely a dry cleaning process is the way to go. Uh, you cannot get that, even the steam cleaners, you just can't get that moisture out beneath the carpeting. And they've actually done studies where they've, uh, they've tested to see what it would take to get mold out of carpeting. And the answer was you had to, if your carpet gets wet, you've got 24 hours to pull it throw the pad out and dry that the backing of that carpet out within 24 hours, otherwise you'll have mold for the life of your carpet.